What is Sony's most innovative camera body so far? Which one advanced what was possible for photographers the most? Would it be the amazing A7S cameras that can literally see in the dark? Was it the original A9 that broke the full frame speed barrier with its double sided stack sensor and 20 frames per second? Or maybe the Alpha 1 that checked every spec box for every shooter? Or would it be the A9 III with its global shutter that sports photographers never would have dreamed to ask for? Which camera that Sony has made so far pushed the needle even past Marty McFly's 11? None of the cameras I just mentioned would have been possible without the APS-C camera that set the entire photography industry on its ass though no one really knew what was happening at the time. Like the bullet that found Fritz Ferdinand's jugular vein a hundred years before, the Sony A6000 wasn't really found to be responsible for upsetting the apple cart until, well, now, and at least in my mind. Ten years ago this spring, Sony launched the now classic A6000 camera body in both black and silver. It weighed in at just three quarters of a pound, had fantastic and accurate autofocus with face detection IAF and the motor drive speed topped out at 11 frames per second, besting the big two's flagship sports cameras who are still stuck at 10 frames per second. But deep inside the beating heart of that camera was a sensor that can manage low light images really well and offer shocking dynamic range, allowing for detail in both shadows and highlights at the same time. Without a lens attached, it would fit in the back pocket of your jeans. With an adapter for Canon lenses, I was able to back then wake up and empower Canon autofocus lenses with Sony's new next generation autofocus technology, which did the unthinkable. It followed a subject through traffic at a sporting events and out the other side without losing focus on the subject. The autofocus system was even better with Sony glass, but there were few choices back then. This is 2014, after all. For portrait work, the IAF was so accurate that I could shoot the Canon 85 1.2L lens wide open and find the pupil sharp on the closest eye nearly every time. It took the guesswork out of perfect eye focus with fast lenses for the first time and made everyone able to shoot portraits with ultra-fast primes. With all the talk about AI these days, the A6000 had it in spades in virtually all of its autofocus areas, but most especially in lock-on expand flexible spot, which was like a George Jetson setting back in 2014. I can still vividly remember shooting at a college football game, shooting the A6000 with the older 7200 f4G lens. I was tracking a long pass which turned into a run into the end zone. The wide receiver then ran behind a host of defenders and emerged on the other side for the touchdown. Later, editing my pictures back home, I saw that the camera had somehow pulled off the unthinkable. Every single frame was sharp at the receiver, even the ones where he ran behind five or six other players. It was in this moment that I knew that Sony was the future. I knew that DSLRs were truly dead, and I committed myself to learning as much as I could about each new model that Sony released over the next few years. On April 23rd, 2014, after receiving my brand new A6000, I wrote in my blog, this is the best $650 I've ever spent, much better than paying a chiropractor. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Sony is on the ball. They are way out ahead, pushing hard. They are innovating mirrorless cameras with each new model that comes out, which is about every six months. I am one happy camper. I had a lot of reason to be happy back then. A short time later, a manager at Nikon said, no professional will ever use a mirrorless camera. He was not long employed after that. Fast forward to January of 2017, three years later, and I was in the basement of the Kahala Hotel during the Sony Open in Hawaii. I was on a secret mission to test out two copies of a yet to be unnamed camera that had been hand carried from Tokyo by five engineers. Through hours of conversation over four days, talking about this new camera, I asked them, what did you call it during the de its development? One of the translation was complete. They all smiled and kind of looked at the floor. Then the man in charge explained, we called it K2. 
The significance was lost on me. So they further explained, K2 is the asteroid that hit Earth and killed the dinosaurs. Then I got it. The dinosaurs were canon and I got it. <laughs> now that was motivation. <laughs> But even still, as awesome as the A9 was in 2017, I think the A6000 still moved us forward more and did it first. While widely popular among amateur photographers, the A6000 never really caught on with pros, likely because it was an APS-C rather than full-frame camera. It was also just too small, too weird, too light. And on the back of a 428, it looked weird, but it sure worked. And so just like Franz Ferdinand's assassin, the A6000 remained largely unknown. The slow grind of history eventually will tell this tale, but with the perspective gained by the passing of time. But I think the case can be made for the A6000 to be Sony's greatest achievement so far, even in light of the A7S, the A9 series, and the Alpha 1. We'll have to wait a while for some more time to pass when a future history of cameras book comes out to see if I'm right. In the meantime, let me know what you think. Which camera do you think deserves the moniker most innovative? I look forward to your comments. Also, if you're interested in the A6000, it's no longer made anymore, but the A6100 does even more and for a lot less money. Thanks so much for watching.